Good morning. Oh, one second. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, the Lord bless you. Good morning. How are you? I believe every single one of you is doing fantastic by the grace of Almighty God. Um, as you come on this morning, share the video, um, tag somebody, call somebody, invite somebody, um, let somebody um, know that we are on live and that let them join um, this glorious session we are about to have this morning to the glory of Almighty God. And um, I believe you are blessed. Um, Tracy, bless morning. And I believe that every single one of you um, is doing fantastic to the glory of Almighty God and that your family are doing wonderful as well. Let's pray. King of glory this morning, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for yet another day that you've given unto us. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A day of success, a day of peace, a day, O oh God, that you have set aside to bless us. A day, O oh God, that you have set aside, Father, to encourage us. A day you have set aside, King of glory, Father, to motivate us. A day you have set aside to teach us. We thank you for this great opportunity. Now, Spirit of the living God, we ask this morning in Jesus' precious name that you will take your place. You will take your place. Visit us wherever your people have tuned in. My prayer is that you will visit that place place. Now we saturate our atmosphere with the blood of Jesus and we saturate everyone that is on this morning with the blood. I ask the Father Spirit of the living God, you will show us uh, a side of you you have never shown us before. Let your name be exalted and glorified. A million thanks in Jesus' life-changing name I pray. Amen. And so the Lord bless you um, for this morning as you come on. Um, make sure you are sharing the video that somebody else will benefit from it. In the name um, that is high and exalted above every other name. Now open your Bible with me to the book of Jeremiah. Open your Bible with me. They will not prevail. They will not prevail. Open your Bible with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1. And our foundation of scripture is Jeremiah 1.19. Jeremiah 1 19. I read the scripture again and um, I'm telling you, I mean, the, the information and the revelation that the Lord was giving me in this um, scripture, this particular scripture here, um, we are all going to um, take a look at it. Um, follow up. The Lord bless you. Good afternoon. Bless afternoon. We are all going to look into it. Oh, good afternoon, Isaac. The Lord bless you, sir. You are watching from Germany. The Lord richly bless you. And so we are going to look into a couple of scriptures. And then uh, we are believing God for um, his um, hand to be upon us and for God to help us and for him to direct us as to which area or where we or what we ought to do. And so it says, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. I want to read it again. And then there is a word that the Lord really by his spirit caused me to zero in on. And so we are going to take that word out of um, the entire scripture um, or this particular verse, and we are going to digest it a little, and then we'll continue. And so Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 19, he says, They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. So now we are picking up the word fight. We are picking up the word fight. So he says, and they shall fight. Now, if the Bible is talking about they, who is they? Because remember, he did not give any specific individual. So who is they? Who is they? Now, I want to submit to somebody that your enemy is not working alone. They are not working alone. I want you to listen to me, child of God. They are not working alone. They are not. It is a network. They're not working alone. 
So he says, they will fight against you, but they will not prevail. Bless, bless afternoon, Charlotte. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail. Now, I'm saying it again. What is fighting you or who is fighting you and I, they are not alone. They are not alone. And so it's a, it's a network. Now, people of God, I want you to listen to me. If the camp of the enemy can come together and fight, and we that call ourselves children of the living God, we are so divided, it's not even funny. They are not alone. They are not. Trust me when I tell you, they are not alone. We are picking up the word fight. Fight. Life is a fight. Everything you and I want to achieve in life, it comes with a fight. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everything that you and I want to achieve in life comes with a fight. You are fighting for your home. You are fighting for your marriage. You are fighting for your children. You are fighting to keep a job. You are fighting for your health. You are fighting for your finances. You are fighting. Everything is a fight. Everything is a fight. Everything is a fight. But we have already been promised by the Lord. He has already promised us. People of God, I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me. I beg of you in the name of the Lord. Everything you and I want to acquire in life or become is a fight. You will have to fight. You want a peaceful home? You will have to fight. You want your children, a better children? You have to fight. I mean, people, and I'm, let, let me repeat it. You are fighting for your health. You are fighting for your marriage. You are fighting for your business. You are fighting for, I mean, everything. Everything is a fight. But Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 19, he said they will fight against you. They, they, it's a, it's a network. It's not one. If you are thinking that your enemy is one, or whoever is after you is just one person. My darling, think again. You are a joker. Because they are connected. The one that is doing what is also connected to somebody or something. So it's a network. It's like a cobweb. A cobweb. A cobweb is connected to something else. And so this one is connected to that one. And you will think that they are alone. Oh, I, I know. This one, I mean, this, 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 this man has become my enemy. And, and you, are, you think you are praying against that man. People of God, please hear me and hear me well. The Bible says we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are not fighting against flesh and blood so if you look at an individual and you say this individual is my enemy my darling you have totally missed it because they are not alone mm -mm. no they are not alone and so he says look at it look at it there is a good news okay that god has promised us he says now he, he says to jeremiah he says and they shall fight thee but they shall not prevail against thee so now let's take the word fight we are zeroing in on that word fight and then we are going to continue very interesting fight to contend in battle 
or physical combat to contend in battle or physical combat to overcome a person by blows or weapons to overcome a person by blows or weapon now the bible really does not give us any um oh lord help me let me bring the right words the bible does not give us any any examples of of blows in the bible mm -hmm. but he talks more about weapons mm. yeah so it doesn't tell us a lot of our blow and this one gave one a blow and that's why no 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 but the bible talks about weapons now therefore let's look oh my goodness come on second corinthians chapter 10 second corinthians chapter 10 come on second corinthians chapter 10 come on come on come on come on gabasi good morning bless morning come on second corinthians chapter 10 come on let's do it quickly the reason why I want to open it is because, um, of course, I can literally quote it, but I want you to look into your Bible. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Look at La Bene Anda Dada Ruki Paraduzigidi Antomaha. Look at verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh though <clears throat> we walk Aretha good morning dear for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh oh let me see if I can read this in a different translation for the weapons look at it the Bible never talk really about blows, you know, but it's a weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Though we walk in the flesh, but we do not war after the flesh. We walk in the flesh. We normal human beings, but we do not war after the flesh. You can literally tell a baby Christian, it doesn't matter how old they say they have been in church. You can literally tell a baby Christian from a mature Christian because baby Christians are the ones that fight physical battles because they don't know what they are about. Oh, mommy, and, and my friend get, get my friend, my friend took my purse. Give me my purse. No, you are not my friend anymore because you took my purse. Yeah, baby. Mature Christians, my darling, will not even put up any stinking attitude because they know that their fight is not in the physical. So they go on their knees and they begin to battle. Listen to me, child of God. Mommy, they took my, they took my, they, my, my, mommy, my, my, mommy, you see, you see, tell, 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 tell John to give me my toy. M mommy, that's mine. That's, that's baby. Total. I mean, I mean, baby, baby, baby to the, the to the one jillion times baby. Mm -hmm. He says the weapon or we are in the flesh, but we are not warring after the flesh because anytime you make an attempt to war after the flesh, you listen, you've already lost the battle. You've already lost the battle. Mm. You've already lost it. Uh, and this one, you know, they, they saw me and they didn't even talk to me. They didn't even talk to me. Uh, they didn't even say hello to me. My, you, you know, they don't even like me anymore. Who cares? My darling, the fight you are in 
<laughs> you think it's a normal fight? They are after your children. They are after your health. They are after your mind. They are after your sanity. They are after your soul. And you think it's a joke? It's not a joke, honey. No, it's not a joke. God tells Jeremiah, they will fight against you. The thing is, whether you and I like it or not, the fight will come. You see, sometimes I hear people say, Mommy, but I have not done anything to anybody. <laughs> uh, I have not done anything to anybody. I have not stole from them. I have said that myself before, honey. Oh, trust me. I have not stolen from them. I have not lied on them. I have not said anything about them. I don't know why. I don't know why. My darling, the very fact that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you automatically signed for a fight. You signed for it. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know why I am always under attack. What is all this attack from? I don't know. You know what? I'm so tired. I'm just tired. Oh my God. I am just tired. And you see them posting stuff, you know, on social media saying, oh, you know, somebody, somebody pray for me. I am down. Somebody pray for my darling. Stop that pity party and get on your knees and fight. Because it's a battle. It's a battle. They are after your sanity. They are after your soul. They are after your mind. They are after your children. My darling, let me tell you something. Hear me and hear me well. Sometimes you hear people praying and, you know, or saying, oh, you know, the devil is after my finances. You know, I'm struggling with finances. My darling, it is not your finances they are after. You would think that it's the finances. No, they are after your soul. Mm. Because, you see, if they can attack your finances and you give up, and you end up in their camp, it is your soul they are after. Not your finances. Finances. No. They are not after your finances. It is your soul. Now I won't, I won't put on your thinking cap, my darling. Your spiritual thinking cap, put it on. It is not after your finances. They are after your soul. I said to a young boy and I said to him, I, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> he's all over the place and he's flunking. He's all over the place and, you know, and uh, today it is this woman. Tomorrow is that girl. The next day is that girl. Next one is that girl. And I said to him, I said, my darling, don't ever think that because you think you are handsome or cute. I said, I said, I said, get a grip of yourself. There are people who are more handsome than you. What the enemy is after is your soul. So that little grace, you have not even gotten the bigger picture. The little grace God has given you, you are flunking everywhere. Oh, today is this woman. Tomorrow is that one. The next day is that one. And you think you are hip. You think, you know what? I'm cool like that. You think, oh man, the girls, I tell you, the girls, my darling, they are after your soul. They are after the anointing. They are not after you. Because if they can succeed in shutting your mouth and stopping you, where are you going? They will fight against you. But he's given us a good news. He said they will. So whether you and I like it or not, whether we signed up, I mean, we, we signed up or not, they are coming up. I'm telling you, that is the reason why it is, it is, it is, it is uh, 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 let me use the right word. It is, it is, it is insanity when somebody says, oh, I mean, what the fact that you become born again, everything is going to be smooth. It's a lie. 
And so people are not prepared for that side. So just as they get hit by something, they are looking for a way to run. Why? Because they were not prepared. They were not told that, listen, this thing is war. Nobody said to them. Nobody warned them. Nobody equipped them. So because the people are not equipped, that is the reason why they get to a point, you see them diverting. They get there, now they are, look, they are going to look for somebody. They are going to look for something to make them popular. Something that will give them money. Something that will make them famous. Something that will make them relevant. But my darling, there are some of us that have not bowed our knees to Baal and so help us God. There is a fight. Listen to me, child of God. And you will have to rise up. They will fight against you. But the good news is this. They will not prevail. So whilst you are in the fight, you have to have this at the back of your mind that even though they are fighting, they will not prevail. So you are not looking at what is happening now, but you are looking at the victory that has already been given you by Christ Jesus when he hanged on that cross and when he said, it is finished, it is finished. Holding on to it. It's a battle. They will not prevail. Get it. Have it here. God has never lied and he will never lie. I mean, it's not in his gene. If, if God has a gene, yes, he has. He's not, it's not even in his gene to lie. He's never done it before. There is a war that is going on. People of God, there is war. They are doing everything to have you in their camp. They are after your soul. They will fight, but they will not prevail. Sometimes, because we were not prepared, we are not prepared, and we ought to be prepared at any time. Child of God, be prepared at any time. Because they are willing to meet you. Hey, and oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I went to a store yesterday in the morning. <laughs> I said to myself, if this man was sent, he picked the wrong person. He just picked the wrong person. I parked at a spot, went into a store, came out of the store. I'm getting into my car. Then I realized, that there is this um, car that is parked beside me. And this man looks like a Caribbean man sitting in the car with the window down. And just as I get, I'm getting into my car, the man says, oh, miss, did you drop this? Listen to me. Did you drop this? I looked at that thing. It's um, it's a wire. It's like a, either um, a phone, a cell phone, um, you know, charger or something. But it's it's oh, but it's um, it's it's put in this round shape, you know, and and oh my Father in heaven, how do I explain this? And um, okay, like this, okay. So if this is the wire, right, it's put in a round thing like this and it's, it's, it's gone round like that. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And then the man said, oh, miss, did you drop this? So I tend to, I tend to the man, <clears throat> I tend to the man and I said, no, I said, no, folded. Thank you, pretty. I said, no, coiled, folded. Thank you, honey. I said, no. Now, just as I was getting into the car, guess what? I am looking at this man 
sitting in the car. And back home in Africa, we have this thing they call Florida water of Florida water. And it's most of the time is used by the occultic Florida water. And the man has a Florida water and open it. The glass is down and I'm getting in my car. Yeah. He's open the Florida, Florida water, Florida water, whatever they call that thing. Oh yeah. In a long bottle like that. Opened the thing because when I sat in the car, he's right by me. So just as I sat in, I looked because he's, oh, do you, I mean, is this, um, did you drop anything? I said, no. I sat in the car and the man opened the Florida water, whatever they call that thing. He opened it and there was another a bottle and the man started pouring the, what is the name of the Florida water, whatever they call that thing. The man started pouring the, 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 the Florida water, whatever the, oh, hi, sweetie, now. And then um, he started pouring the, the thing into another bottle. So the smell, the smell of that, that thing, that Florida water, whatever they call it, the smell of that thing started invading in the atmosphere or started, you know, filling that spot. I sat in my car, slammed the door, rolled the glass, off I drove. I drove. Now, this is what happened. I'm talking about yesterday. I sat in the car, drove off a little. Then all of a sudden, I felt I was like lightheaded. I stopped the car. I said, devil wrong address i said wrong address i was sending fire everywhere people of god it's a battle it's a total battle it's a battle so he said to jeremiah they will fight against you but they will not now how would they not prevail is when you know you're right as a child of god when you know what to do, you know your right as a child of the living God. If you don't know your right, if you don't know the power God has given you, if you don't know the weapon he has given you, the weapons of fire and the weapon of the blood and the weapon of tender and the weapon of lightning, if you don't know, they will take advantage of you. So he said, they'll fight against you, but they will not prevail against you. Fight. Look at it. Fight. They are sending all kinds of missiles. You being alive this morning, you being alive this morning is because he did not permit the enemy to have his way. He did not allow the enemy to have his way. If not, you will not be alive this morning. Why? Because it's a network they've set up network everywhere. Agents everywhere. They are in churches. They are in your company. You get up in the morning and because it's a, um, it's a serious network, listen to me. You get to the store and, and all of a sudden, somebody want to pick up a fight. You get to the gas station. All of a sudden, somebody want to pick up a fight. You get to your children's school. Somebody want to pick up a fight. I mean, you are driving on the street. Somebody want to pick up a fight. Why? Because there are agents everywhere. It's a network. It's a network. And most of the time, hear me, child of God. And hear me well. Most of the time. The one that God. Bible 
Bible says one shall chase a thousand and two of us shall chase ten thousand. Therefore, most of the time, the one that God have ordained, assigned for you to come in contact, to form a unified force, to fight the enemy, they will do anything to disconnect you from that individual. Whether through um, quarrel, whether through what, they will do anything because they know that why, why, do, why does the enemy come against husband and wife? Why? Because he knows that if the two of you come together, my God, great will be their fall. So they do anything. And they allow pettiness. Petty. Petty, petty things. And she didn't smile. And they didn't even look at me. And they didn't even do this. And they didn't even do that. And it's just petty, petty things. Hmm. They know how to start commotion. They know how to start commotion. And fighting doesn't mean that you will not be hit. When one is in a fight, it means that as you are hitting the enemy, he will also hit back. But guess what? At the end of the fight, you are already declared a winner before the foundation of the earth. You are already declared the victorious one before the foundation of the earth. Open your Bible with me. Jeremiah chapter 15. Interestingly, before we do Jeremiah chapter 15, let's look. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at this with me. Look at this with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to check something out with me. When the children of Israel, the Bible says there arose a Pharaoh who did not know who Joseph was. And this Pharaoh decided to afflict the children of Israel. But the Bible says, the more they afflicted them, the more they grew and the more they prospered. Let's look at it. <clears throat> look at this with me. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want you... I want you to listen to this. Many a times, the enemy will make us forget that what we are in is literally a battlefield. Exodus. The enemy will make us think or forget that what we are in is a battlefield and our mind is the battleground. How prepared is your mind? How tough is your mind? How tough is it? Because if you don't have a tough mind, people of God, because the enemy doesn't come after your heart, he first comes after your heart, your mind. So he releases thought. I mean, do I really have to do this? 
do I really have to do that? I mean, I mean, what, 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 what at all are these people? I mean, what, 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 what at all, what at all are they looking for? I mean, who, who, who do they think they are? It starts from the mind. The mind. Exodus, chapter one. Start from the mind. The thing is, we have allowed our mind to just be dormant. We have not taken the word of the Lord and fill our minds with the word. And so the enemy comes and is playing with our mind. And because there is nothing in there, there's nothing in our heart, he comes to play us. Exodus chapter 1. Hmm. Hmm. Let's start from verse Mm. Let's start from verse 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zabulon, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Now these are the sons of Jacob, the 12, tribe, the 12 sons of Jacob. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls for, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful. Now look at this. Look at this. One man. Mm -hmm. One man. Joseph. Who was sold. God used one. Joseph, if you look at the life of Joseph, which also is a typology of Christ. When you look at the life of Joseph, you, we can conclude that Joseph was a prophet of prosperity. We can easily conclude. Why? Because through him, through the counsel of Joseph, Egypt was spared from hunger. I'm not going into it, but let's continue. So the Bible says, and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and was exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt. My daddy, let me tell you something. Don't ever think that your enemy's throne is empty. Somebody tweeted, somebody write it. Don't ever think that your enemy's throne is empty. Mm -hmm. Don't ever think that your enemy's throne is empty. Don't. I said to somebody the other day and I said this. Whilst you are praying and saying that you are dethroning your enemy, they have already said somebody that if this one is off, somebody else will sit on the throne. Don't, don't allow the enemy to lie to you, telling you that the enemy's throne is always empty. It's never true. There is a reason, thank you Holy Spirit, there is a reason for building altars. Mm. Whilst you are praying, and doing everything to bring down the altar in your house. There is somebody in your family background that is busy building that altar up. It's a constant battle. Hear me, darling. So whilst you are praying, I pull down every evil altar in the name of Jesus. Every evil altar in my mother's bloodline, in my father's bloodline. You are pulling altars. And by the virtue of the covenant of marriage, my God, in my father, my husband's background, I pull down any altar that is connected to my life. You are praying and pulling down altars. My darling, there is somebody in the family that is busy building those altars. When an altar stands alone, 
it is doomed for destruction. Somebody write it. When an altar stands alone, it is doomed for destruction. So what the enemy does is this. The enemy do, will do anything to isolate. When you are isolated, he can kill you. I'm saying it for the last time. I'm rewinding. An altar that stands alone is doomed for destruction. Because that evil altar is also connected to another altar. Hear me and hear me well. That evil altar is also connected to another altar. So, let me tell you what I know. What I know is this. I'm from Africa. Very proud to be an African. Blessed to be an African. Guess what? In, I don't know about other places, but let me take my place for example. In my place, where we come from, there is a belief or a fact that there are 90, 77 major gods, major, you know, major gods in that small city there, 77. That is what they know. And besides those 77 gods, major gods in that place, every home has a god. In homes that have gods, every family has a god. And in that family, there are people that have their personal gods. And so those that have a personal god, they are god. I'm not, I'm not talking about almighty god. I'm talking about a lesser god. So some of them, if it is connected... Or most of the time it's literally connected. So the personal God is connected to the family God. That family God is connected to the city God. That city God is connected to a national God. I said it in the beginning. Don't allow anybody to tell you that your enemies are alone. It's a lie. It's a serious lie. They are not alone. So it is, it is, it is a chain. So from this one to this one, from this one to that one, from this one. Altars are connected to altars. You know why? Because a small individual altar, I'm talking about an evil altar, doesn't have that much power. They might have some. But it doesn't have that much power. Probably like the family altar. So, the individual altar draws strength or power from the family altar. The family altar is drawing strength or power from the city altar. The city altar, and that is the reason why there are people in your families that when they are cursing, you see them, they invoke the, the God of the city. 
Why are they invoking the God of the city? Because their small God cannot do what they want, the, what they want happen. So they invoke the God of the city. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look at it with me. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, now listen to me, the battle we are in, one of the battle is the battle of words. The battle we are in, one of the battles or one of the weapons used in the battle is the battle of words. Everything you and I get ourselves involved in is nothing but words. This one is speaking. That one is speaking. When they are invoking, they speak. When they are cursing, they speak. <laughs> A battle of words. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. The people are more and they are mightier than us. Why do you think you have enemies? Why do you think that the battle has become very fierce? Why do you think so? Why? Why do you think so? It's because of where you are going. And sometimes we ourselves don't even know ourselves. The enemy can see where you are going. What you are going to become. Hmm. Oh yeah. Let us, because the people are more mightier than us. I mean, who are these people that 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 it's like the it's like they are becoming so mighty? Who are these people? He says, Come on, let us deal. The key word there is deal. Let's deal with them. And so in a particular place in Africa, if somebody says, I will deal with you, my darling, you better, you better rise up in prayer. I will deal with you. If somebody say, I will deal with you, they know what they are talking about. There is a, a proverb or an adage in my country. They said, if a blind man tells you, I will stone you then the blind man knows that his feet is on a stone. <laughs> mm. If a blind man, or someone you know is totally blind, and the person says, I will stone you, it means that the leg of that blind man is on something they know they can easily scoop down, pick it up and throw. So for someone to say, I will deal with you, they know their source. Oh, yeah. For somebody to say, I will deal with you, they know their source. Mm. So he says, come on. Let us deal wisely with them. Lest they multiply and it come to pass that when they falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so, they, so look at it. And so, get them up, out. And so, get them up and out. My darling, the main agenda or one of the agendas of the enemy is to uproot you. That where you are planted, the enemy wants to uproot you. So look at it. He says, let us 
get them up and out. So if they can remove you from your source, they can overthrow you. If you don't have roots, you'll be overthrown. Let us, oh Gadia, Paradiva Gumaha, let us, look at it, let us get them up out of the land. People of God, I want you to listen to me and listen to me well. If the enemy can uproot you, he can literally destroy you. Let us, the Lord bless you. Eno Rua. Eno Rua. Rua. The Lord bless you. So he says, let us get them up. So, <coughs> Let us get them up first. And then we can get them out. If we cannot get them up, we can get them out. So we will have to do anything to force them out of their place. So when we are able to put fire and force them out, when they come out, we can easily destroy them. Hmm. Let us, now look at it. <laughs> Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them. I told you, they don't work alone. So Pharaoh, the king, is now working with taskmasters. First, it was with his elders. Then from the elders, so now look at it. It was Pharaoh, the king, had a meeting with his elders group of people. Now he says, let us get tax masters. So it's from the king, now from the rule, uh, from the elders, now is going to the assassins. Mm. Let us look at it. Set over them tax masters to afflict them with their burdens. Let's get tax masters. In other words, I am a king. I only rule. Elders, you are only there to help me rule, counsel. But there are others that are in charge of what we are looking for to do. So let us get Mm. Tax masters. Because what the thing is, we only need, we don't need, we don't need, you know, um, um, uh, assassinators right now. We don't need, um, um, you know, um, gossipers right now. We don't need, no, 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 we don't need them right now. We need tax masters. And the tax masters, their main agenda is to afflict. I'm closing my Bible. Thank you, Lord. The main assignment is to afflict. Afflict them. The first thing the enemy did was to make sure they work on the minds of the people. So the one that came here and made you people think that you are something. The person is no more here. Mm -hmm. So now we are the ones in charge. The people. Let me, let me finish reading it. Then we'll continue. Exodus 1. Look at it. Verse 11 again. Therefore, they did set over them tax masters to afflict them with their burdens. 
And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pitham and Ramses. The next thing is this. He said to Jeremiah, they will fight against you, but they will not prevail against you. Why? Because I go, I am with you. Verse 12. One second. All right. Verse 12. Says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Oh. The more they, they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Why? 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 Because God had already promised them that he will never leave them nor forsake them. God had already promised that he is with, with them even to the end of the days or the times. God has already promised them that he's with them. So the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. My darling, Hear me and hear me well. Everything that you and I are involved in entails battles. Some of you are fighting for your marriages. Some of you are fighting for your children. Some of you are fighting for your health. Some of you, it's your finances. There is a fight. Some of you, your own spouse have risen up against you. Some of you, it was your own best friend. Some of you, it's a family member that pretended Some of you, it's the boss that you thought loved you. Some of you, it's your best friend. Some of you, it's even your. Reason up against you. Some of you, it's your own husband or wife. Some of you, it's the people you spend sleepless night praying for them. Some of is the one you sat at the table and ate with that said to you I will always be there battles battles the battle is not for what you have the battle is for your soul. The battle is for your soul. They are after your soul. They know if it is money, we came to meet money. <laughs> there are people who are even more richer and they are dead and gone because they know that nobody will take money you know, anywhere. Nobody would take money anywhere. So they know that. But 
that if they can get your soul in hell, they have great joy. They are after your soul. There are times you are in a house, a family, and all of a sudden somebody is starting something. You ought to be smart enough in the spirit and command that spirit behind it to get out. We are looking at human beings and say, I cannot believe. Oh my God, that's Sylvia. Jesus. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's Sylvia. That's Sylvia. That's Sylvia. My darling, no. Put the flesh of Sylvia aside. Put the body, physical body, of that individual aside. And begin to look beyond by the Spirit. Look beyond. Any altar that stands alone is doomed. That is the reason why God connects people to people because one shall chase a thousand and two shall chase ten thousand. Ten thousand. Who do you call a prayer partner? Begin to check them very well. The one you are calling a prayer partner. I am not saying that all prayer partners are not good. Check them by the Spirit. There are times people are praying in tongues and you would think, oh, this person is praying in tongues, my daddy, no. It's the medium of communication to the dark world. They are just reporting what is happening there to the dark world. Rise up and wise up. Rise up and wise up. Whenever you say to the Lord, I am ready. You would think that everything is going to go smooth. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. Oh, Lord. <laughs> kumbaya. No. They have different kinds of weapons. The weapon of the tongue. The weapon of the eye. The weapon of the hands. All kinds of weapons. Mm. Rise up and wise up. How do you wise up without the Holy Spirit? How is that possible? It's not possible. It is not possible. So you see people that are physically, seriously educated and yet the enemy is whipping them like crazy. You see people who have all kinds of degrees and yet cannot even find a job. So if their smartness could fix it, 
it would have been fixed. <laughs> mm. Let's pray. Father, we want to say thank you for this morning. Every glory and every praise belongs to you. Thank you for your faithfulness, your mercy, and your goodness. Words really cannot express how grateful we are today. Father, for speaking, teaching, equipping us. We ask in Jesus' precious name that, Lord, this word will go forth, that hearts will be receptive and minds will be ready. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for we are in a battlefield. And today you've thought us that yes, they will fight, but they will not prevail. Let this assurance be a belt around our waist. This assurance be a necklace around our neck. And let it be upon the tables of our heart. Knowing that because you said it, you are faithful to your word. Thank you. Continue to empower us. Continue to strengthen us. Continue to be with us. Continue to show us. Continue, Lord, to instruct us. For you said to me the other day, Everything you do for us is for your name's sake. Therefore, Lord, do it for your name's sake. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord richly bless you um, this morning. And um, share the video. Let somebody be blessed by it. Keep Go back and revisit this broadcast and listen to it. Listen to the broadcast. Go back. And listen to the broadcast over and over and over and over and over and over. Mm. Go back and listen to it. The scriptures I quoted, go and pick up the scriptures again and read them. My prayer is that God, as you read, will begin to give you revelation into the word of the living God. If the Lord, those of you who love and it's, it's a normal thing for you. That wherever God has placed you, you are not satisfied. So the enemy knows that you are not satisfied. And you don't want to spend time in prayer, in fastings, in building spiritual altars through your prayer and your sacrifices. And so therefore, he's positioning people that look like God, talk like Christ, act like the Holy Ghost. But they are not. So the enemy keeps connecting you. By the time you realize that all this while and all these places and people you connected to, it was nothing but the gate of hell. By the time you realize, your soul is totally captured and you are in trouble. Pray. Jesus did not tell us, just pray. He says, watch and pray. So whilst you are watching, you are praying. And whilst you are praying, you are also watching. Father, I give you praise and I give you thanks for your people. Bless them in Jesus' name. If you are watching and you have not given your heart to the Lord, you have not given your heart to the Lord. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Sweetie, hear me and hear me well. This is your time to accept him, to walk with him, to know him. Because the world is not getting any easier. It's going to get worse. We're going to have a whole bunch of things happening. But the Bible says that those who know they are God, they will be strong and they will do exploit. Know who you are in Christ. Don't be 
an isolated altar. <laughs> there are some who are pastors. They are pastors. And because they have the grace, all right, they have the grace and the oil, a little oil as, and they can prophesy. We think they are prophets. And because we are lazy, we don't want to seek God for ourselves. We always want to go, 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 go. By the time you realized that your relationship with God was more or is more important than anything else. Because he said to us, at the end of the day, prophecy will cease. It will. It's good for you to have people in your life that see far than you are. And then they can tell you or warn you of the tricks and the plans of the enemy. It's wonderful. But have a personal relationship with God. See, dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be Lord over my life. I surrender everything to you. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. With my heart, I believe that he died and rose again. From today, I give you my heart. Thank you for this great opportunity in Jesus' name. Now, Father, anyone watching that pray this prayer, my prayer is that, Lord, you will hold their hands and lead them. They need you as they need their next breath. And Father, I pray that you will empower them, encourage them, oh God, and lead them into the still waters where they will find peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Father, bless your people today. The rest of the day is in your hands. And I ask that, Father, you will speak to some, some reveal yourself to them. Whenever, Lord, you see fit, do it for your glory. And for your name's sake, in Jesus' life-changing name, I pray. Amen. You are in the hands of God. Stay there. In God's hands, there is mercy and healing and deliverance. Everything you are looking for is in the hands of God. Don't be in a rush to get out. Stay there. He knows how to take you to places you never, ever dreamt of being. Sweetie. You need him. You need God. You need him. You do. <laughs> Let me say it for the last time. You need God. I love you. With the love of the living God. I'll see you. When the Lord opens the doors of life unto us again, know that you, every decision you made to serve God and to stick with God was not a useless decision. The best decision you ever made in life was to stick with the Lord. Stick with Him. The Lord bless you. I love you. And um, share the video. Spend time. Go back and listen to it again. It will help you. Stay connected to your source. God. See you.